What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got a response to the tag video from Alex the Comic Hoarder. This is the top 10 first appearances in my collection. Stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So Alex the Comic Hoarder put out a video recently. It was one of these tag videos where basically you're doing something, showing something with your collection, and uh, you're trying to get other people in the community to also do a similar video. Just everybody gets to kind of like show off their books. You see some cool books, fun stuff. So thought I would do that. And most of the people I've watched a lot of these tag videos that, that I would that I would call out as well have already been mentioned, but uh, I'll mention uh, Comics with Bonix, Steve with Comics with Bonix, and Aaron with AA Comics. If you watch this video, I'd love to see your top 10 first appearances. I know you both have some awesome books. So I did leave a couple out uh, in, in this one because uh, I just wanted to be able to show a few different books. Uh, so in general, it is my, my top 10, but there's a couple I, I did leave out of there. Now, I decided just the easiest way to do it was in order of values. So that's that's the order start with number 10 moving down to number one there's a mix of golden age silver age and I'd say it's like modern copper in here so i think books for everybody lots of cool books the first one this is one of the reasons i pulled out a couple of the the books because i wanted to be able to show some books like this and this is wonder woman number six and wonder woman number six is it's i actually i i like this one more than uh, Wonder Woman 1 just because it, it does have this like ma pretty major first appearance in it for Wonder Woman uh, being Cheetah so it's first appearance of Cheetah and but the big thing is that she's on the cover and that just it just never happens I mean or not not never but almost never happens in the golden age in modern books Silver Age books that kind of thing we're all very used to having that first appearance with the character on the cover but in the golden age they didn't usually do that and my understanding at least is that they didn't know if that character would end up being popular and so they wanted to have the primary character whether it was like wonder woman superman batman on the cover and then that new character would be on the interior and then if they got popular they would appear on covers later that's why even batman one doesn't have joker or catwoman on the cover they don't appear on covers for for quite a while uh, after that especially catwoman she doesn't appear for quite some time but uh but yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of these 1.8s that I have, but I think a pretty nice looking 1.8. There's a couple little pieces out of the, uh, out of the top up there. Um, but in general, a very, pretty nice presenting copy and her tail is really long. <laughs> I've always thought that with this, I'm like, her tail is really long, but yeah, Wonder Woman number six, 1943, first appearance of Cheetah. That's uh, book number 10. Then to number nine. I actually have a raw copy of this one too that I hope grades like a half grade, maybe a full grade higher. Uh, have not submitted that one yet, but it'll be in my next submission. This is Journey Into Mystery number 85. And this is the first appearance of a bunch of characters. This is the first appearance of Loki, that's the main one, but also Heimdall and Odin in Cameo and Asgard. And it's also this one, you, you know, unlike the normal Golden Age books, you have Loki right on the cover, front and center. And uh, this is a book that has just gotten so popular since the Loki show came out. Used to still be a pretty affordable Silver Age key, even though it's a multi-key, has a lot of really popular characters in it. Before that show, I remember I had a, a 1.8 that I think I, I had listed for a while and ended up selling for like $900. And then at the height of the show, it was like a $2,000 plus dollar book. Um, now they have come down since the show that just it's what happens you know they spike into to shows or movies and and then they start to come down but we do know we're getting another uh, season of loki and who knows how much they might use him continuing in the mcu and so uh, i think they're still great books to own especially since they've been coming down in price some so i've got this one and then one that i think will be about a three five four uh hopefully that is a uh, a raw copy i feel like i'm maybe a little uh the, the four is probably a little little hopeful but hoping better than this one because it looks nice and this one has a rusty staple on the bottom now so we'll see but uh that's number nine journey into mystery 85 all right now number eight this is one of my favorite silver age covers this is 
X-Men number four. I just, I love these sunburst type covers where it starts, you know, with like the yellowish orange in the bottom and fades up into the red. Just looks really sharp. Uh, sometimes they do it in reverse as well. I like, I like them both. I like these, those covers where they do that faded kind of like shading in the background. But this is another multi first appearance key. Tons of first appearances in this one. First appearance of Quicksilver, first appearance of Scarlet Witch, first Toad, first Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, uh, among others. And then also second appearance of Magneto. But also, I just, I like how they draw Magneto on this cover. I think he looks really menacing. You actually are getting that front view instead of kind of from the side, like on X-Men number one. And he looks much better than in issue five. I don't really care for the cover on issue five, um, but, uh, but this one, really like you've got just all those characters right on the front with the x-men and just really cool cover one of my favorite early silver age covers definitely one of my favorite covers from x-men all right so that is number eight now number seven this is when we are jumping up into more of the it's like the copper modern era and this is new mutants number 98 you might say, well, why is this book above those other books? Why is it more expensive than those? And it is because of that little barcode down there. Um, so the barcode meaning that this is the newsstand edition of this book. And in 1991, when this came out, newsstands were much less common than in uh, the early 80s or kind of late 70s, early 80s when they, they started differentiating them. Now, regardless, uh, this, and this is, you know, I know this is a, it's a controversial topic for some people, but even in the early 80s, the newsstands in a 9.8 tend to be much more difficult to find. Now, I know there are way more newsstand copies out there, but in the high grades, because of how those books were handled, much more difficult to find. But especially when you get into the period when there are a lot less newsstands, like you are in the 90s, uh, they are, they are, a lot more valuable. You'll, you'll find uh, that these sell for around two times as much at, at this period as the uh, direct edition, sometimes even a little more than that. And so pretty pricey book in the newsstand, but first appearance of Deadpool, really a character that <laughs> this book was basically a nothing book uh, until we had the first Deadpool movie. I mean, it really, Ryan Reynolds drove this book into to popularity just drove the value into this book. Now it is one of the more expensive modern copper books that, that are out there. And uh, so and cool Punisher back cover, but just a tough book to get in a 9.8. So that is number seven, New Mutants, number 98, first appearance of Deadpool. All right, now number six. Okay, this one, it's a, a little unique. So this is Amazing Spider-Man number four in a 6.5. This is the first appearance of Sandman, but the thing that you can see here is that this is the UK edition. And so instead of having the, um, the 12 cents, it has nine D or nine pence. And so this is something I've talked about in some other videos where we've been seeing the popularity in these, or in the demand for these pence copies increasing some over the last year or so. And so they are much more rare than the sense copies, but it's just, you know, it's the way it is with, with collectors and everything. You, you kind of, you want that, that sense copy that tends to be why they, they sell for more, but these are much more rare and there have been occasional sales where these have exceeded or met the same prices as the sense copy. So it does seem like there is some shift in the tides in, in these books, especially because, at least from what I've heard, the pence copies were printed first. I don't know how much truth there is to that. It might just be people that have the pence copies trying to push that, but I have heard that the pence copies were printed first, which is why they will often have much brighter colors. And you can see the reds and everything on this one are, are just fantastic. And so, at least from what I've seen, that seems to be true, that the colors on the Pence copies are really, really bright. But who knows? I, I don't know how much truth there is to that. But, uh, but yeah, first appearance of Sandman. I mean, it's, regardless, it's Amazing Spider-Man number four. It's in a 6.5, and it is a really nice presenting copy. This one, the main issue is just this, uh, this dust shadow on the side here. Now, it has a little bit some creasing and that kind of thing. The dust shadow is the main thing on this book, but... Amazing Spider-Man number four. This is number six on my list. First appearance of Sandman. All right. 
Now, number five also happens to be an issue number five. This is a book that I just did an unboxing for, you know, a couple weeks ago, and this is Fantastic Four, number five, first appearance of Doctor Doom, and now I know it is missing that large piece on the cover, but it doesn't matter. It is still a very valuable book. It is still the first appearance of Doctor Doom, and you can still see him on the cover, and you still see Doom, which I think is cool. Uh, yeah, now obviously it would be better if it had that piece there, but then this would probably be like a 2.5 or something, and it would be way more expensive. So still very expensive book, first appearance of Doctor Doom, one of the most desirable books right now, just because everybody is expecting to eventually see this character with the Fantastic Four being in the MCU. I hope we do. I hope we see the character done well. And there's even... I don't know how much truth there is to that, but there's speculation that the uh, the villain in Moon Knight is actually going to be Doctor Doom. I don't buy that for a second, but hey, you know, never know. But uh, yeah, first appearance of Doctor Doom. This is in a CBCS 1.0 and uh, Fantastic Four number five. Awesome book. All right. Now, number four. This is part of why I waited to film this video. I knew I was getting this book in and I wanted to have this book in the video. This was also just recently in an unboxing. This is Incredible Hulk number two in a 6.5. And this, while the first appearance of the Hulk is in issue number one, this is the first appearance of the Green Hulk. And so that's the Hulk that most of us really know. That's the Hulk that always gets put on screen. It's that Green Hulk. And you've also got a bunch of second appearances on there too. Second appearance of Hulk, Rick Jones, uh, Betty Ross, and General Ross. I could also use this because it's the first appearance of the Toad Men. You know, that, that, those characters are clearly going to be used in the MCU, and they're very important. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but this is a, a beautiful copy, a 6.5. I, I mentioned it in the unboxing video. You just you do not come across copies in this type of grade of the early Hulk books hardly ever. They, they just, their census counts are a lot lower. They didn't seem, I don't know if they didn't print as many, but it seems like they didn't print as many. Obviously, they discontinued the run at six, so it probably wasn't all that popular at the time. But uh, this this one is a tough book to get in grade. I think it's in about the top 14%, give or take, of Hulk number twos. Um, but yeah, just a, a really nice presenting copy. 6.5 of Credible Hulk number two, first appearance of the Green Hulk. All right, now to number three. Now I said the X-Men number four was one of my favorite Silver Age covers. This probably, I'd have to think about it, but this might be my absolute favorite Silver Age cover. And this is Fantastic Four number 49. And this is the first cover appearance of Galactus and Silver Surfer, but it is also the first full appearance of Galactus. Now, he shows up in Cameo in issue 48, so it's the same thing as Hulk 180 and 181, have whatever argument you want about that. But this is the first full appearance of Galactus, and also you've got that first cover, which is nice, and the second appearance of Silver Surfer. So this one, I mean, I, it took me a while to, uh, to get up to this book. Uh, I've talked about this before with, with books that are kind of on my, my keepers type list. Some of the things that I've done before have been to try to just gradually upgrade the book where I, I find a copy and so then I just at least have a copy and then as I find another better copy I'll buy that one and sell the prior one and I probably went through about four or five copies. I think I started at a 4.0. Uh, before I got up to uh, up to this 8.5 and I had been hoping to get into the nines but I picked this one up in late 2020 and then we had the comic boom <laughs> and so uh, now this book is like seven thousand dollars or something like that in an 8.5 and so a whereas when I picked it up I think I paid like a little over two you know I mean that's how much prices have changed with these books since 2020 because of the comic boom um, but I had been hoping to get a nine but now I just, I don't know if that's in the cards. And this is a really beautiful 8.5. I mean, it's almost nowhere on the spine. Just a, I mean, it, there's a little, little wear on the bottom there, on the bottom of the cover. And the main flaw to me, that I think really is what knocked it down to that 8.5 is just this really, let's see if I can get it to show up. Let's see it here. There's a really light little crease right there doesn't even fully break color, but it's that 
light crease right next to the Comics Code Authority. That That is, I remember when I first got this book, I was just like, why is this book an 8.5? It took me a while to find the the main flaw that knocked it down to the 8.5 because everything else was really so so nice with this book. It looks like a 9 plus, but that, that little crease there, that's what did it. So, But uh, 8.5, Fantastic Four, number 49. First full appearance of Galactus. All right, now to number two. This is one of the books that's one of the mainstays on my list. I love talking about this book. I think it's crazy that I own this book. Uh, this is Wonder Woman number one. And the reason this one is on here is this is the first appearance of Ares. Now in issue number two, they change his name to Mars and that's what they use uh, generally throughout the uh, the history of Wonder Woman. It's actually, he is the, the villain that she fought in the first Wonder Woman movie, the uh, the guy, the god that she was fighting at the end, God of War, Ares. Uh, but this one is a, it's a 0.5. It is missing uh, two center wraps, um, but it is still Wonder Woman number one. And, you know, it's got obviously a very rough spine, all that kind of stuff, but really it's not missing any big pieces out of the cover and uh, so I think that's it's just a, a big thing with these lower grade books it still gives you a nice presentation of the book I have thought about seeing if I could get the spine roll fixed uh, and then put into like a CGC slab just because you can see it's got it's got a pretty big spine roll on it but there's, I mean, it's not like it's gonna affect the grade, but that staple is attached there and you could easily just tear out that staple um, if you if you try to do that, but I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't mind having it in a CGC case, but I don't know if I wanna spend that money because you know this is it's a very expensive book and when you're getting a book graded like this, it's walkthrough and then you have to pay 3% of value and so I'd be paying, you know, 300 bucks, give or take, um, to, uh, to have this book graded. And so, or like a regraded just to put in the CGC slab and I don't know if it's worth it or not to me. Um, but something I thought about, but yes, this is number two on my list. This is the uh, first appearance of Ares, eventually becomes Mars. Wonder Woman number one from 1942. And uh, if you wanna see the first appearance of Wonder Woman, go check out Alex the Comic Hoarder's video of this uh, because he has that. <laughs> so uh, that is a very expensive book. So that's, that's pretty awesome that he has that one. All right, so for number one, this is a book you should recognize if you watch my channel because it has been on the wall behind me for like six weeks. I, I, part of the reason I changed out my wall, so I, I made it all these red covers, you know, because I didn't have enough red in the background already. Uh, but I, these are my, let's see if I can get, these are my favorite red covers. I've got, you know, X-Men 14, Flash 104, X-Men 12, Scooby-Doo 1, Famous Funnies 214, and Batman 42. Uh, so changed it out so that I could do this video because I had a couple of the books up on that shelf that I needed for this. This was one of them. This was the top center book. This is Detective Comics number 168. This is the first appearance of the Red Hood, the origin of the Joker. This is also the Promise Collection pedigree copy. So you can see Promise Collection pedigree and it is a beautiful 1.8. I mean, yeah, it's got some little things like the tears on the side and the cover is detached and it has that split along the bottom but this is a very very nice presenting 1.8 the colors are incredible and the back cover looks incredible i love how these back covers in these golden age books they just they use such bright colors just really cool advertisements on here uh, it definitely hasn't been pressed uh, you can tell when you you know when you when you look at See. Yeah, you see some of that's the, that like wrinkling. Like you can tell this book wasn't pressed; they just sent it in. Um, but I don't think it's really worth the risk. I don't want to deal with it. You know, with it potentially coming back like a 1.5, they're getting more spine splitting. Uh, so leaving it as is, it's it looks awesome regardless. And I love that gold label with the uh, with the black cover. Um, but this is number one on my list. This is. One of my favorite books that I own. If you watch my channel, you know I am a big Batman collector, and so right now this is kind of like the the pinnacle book uh, that I have. And uh, so this is Detective Comics 168, first appearance of the Red Hood, number one on my top 10 first appearance list. All right, so those were my top 10. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, uh, Aaron with AA Comics and Steve with Comics with Bonnox, if you see this video, 
Love to see your top 10 as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.